Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 1a, Logging, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about NumPy and ND arrays. In Python, I will simply discuss the standard logging module that exists in the standard library, and in Rust, uh, I'll show you the log and the nth logger crates and how they can be used to get some meaningful logs out of your applications. Let's look into the code. On the left, as usual, we have the Python code. On the right, we have the Rust code. Python code is uh, split in uh, two parts. So up here, I have this uh, foo module code open. And at the bottom is the application called log that actually does the stuff here. You can see it imports foo to then run the foo function. The idea behind that is to show how you can influence the logging levels in different modules of your code. So what's going on in the Python code? We are importing uh, logging and the config. The YAML module is imported because that file format is fairly easy to edit. You can put comments inside and that way you have an easy control over how logging is uh, configured. This is happening down here. We are loading uh, from YAML a dict that is in the format that um, the logging config accepts. So we call the dict config uh, constructor with the, the config that we stored in our file. And this way we get to configure how logging is done in Python. Then in the application, we don't do anything special, but we log on every uh, level possible. So warning, error, infos, and debug. And then we call the full libraries run. Full libraries run also does call warn, info, and debug and even has a submodule called bar where it runs and this has the same code in it basically. To set up the logger in a submodule, um, you should get a logger and uh, the name of the module. This way you have control over how your module is named in the formatting function. Let's quickly also look into the YAML config file. Look conf yaml. So this mimics the dict that is necessary to configure this. And uh, the first thing that you want to configure is the formatters. So how you want to have the output uh, formatted. We are uh, using the time. Then in Angular brackets, we get the level that was used. In Angular brackets, again, the module's uh, name. And then we end up with uh, the message that was uh, logged. The date format you have control over just as you would in other date formatting application. And then you have uh, even the choice of multiple formatters that you can set up. So I have configured two. One is called simple, one is called extended. The extended only has additionally the line number of where the log call yeah, was happening. Then you get to configure your handlers. I will also have uh, two here. So one is for the console. This will just uh, print out to standard out um, the logs that are happening. And by default, this has the log level of uh, debug. If we now uh, go further down in this um, code, or actually configuration file, it's not uh, code. Here we have the second handler. This will then uh, log to a file called uh, test.log. And it uses the extended formatter. And here for the output on the screen, we use the simple one, right? After that, you can set up uh, loggers. And these can be set up per module. So for the foo module, we set up a log level of info. We use the console handler and uh, we don't want this uh, to propagate uh, any further. And further down in this configuration as well, you can see that the, the sub module bar, so foo.bar gets to log at the level of debug and both handlers, so the file handler and the console logger are set up. And for root, so your all of your application, we actually use the info log level and we print out to the console. You see that uh, this has very fine and granular control over what's happening. So the standard libraries the logging module is already very, very powerful and can do way more than I'm showing here. But these are good uh, starting points to get some proper logging in your application. Let's quickly run our Python thing. 
So Python uh, log pi. And it actually uh, logged stuff. You can see here that we uh, get our output as we configured. So we have the date and time. We get the level, the module's name. And if it's in foo, then it will be foo. A foo bar will also be correctly set. And here we go all the way to debug. But in foo, we only have the info level. And the same is true for root. So there's also no debug output. Configuration works. This is very powerful. And you can actually influence the logging without changing source code. So that's very cool. You just change your configuration file. And this way, you can have different setups in your development or on the deployment side. Now over uh, to the Rust code, it does not do exactly the same. The way to configure the logging in Rust is using environment variables, which is also very flexible. And you can keep them in a sudo config file because you just put it in a startup script of your application. So we will use uh, the chrono local to get a uh, daytime. Then uh, we find uh, the builder of the environment uh, logger crate. And then we use different filter levels. And we use the right trait to format um, our string that we want to log in the end. Here we have the module foo, which maps to the foo that we had. And underneath there we have bar. We uh, log it in all kinds of levels. Then we have the main application, and here we run into the builder. Let's uh, go a bit uh, further down in the code. So the builder creates a new instance, and this uses the builder pattern. So right after, you can then use a dot .format to set up the formatter. What this does is it takes a function. So here we just use a closure that gets the buffer you want to write your log to, and a, rock, a record instance of the log record. So here we use the right line macro to write to the buffer our formatted string and then uh, the elements. And the same thing, we have the date format as we've seen in the YAML on the left. We use uh, the level of the uh, log record. Then we get the module path. And if we are not able to get one, we will use a dash to denote that it was not available information. And then the arguments of the log record why arguments and uh, not message? Well, these macros take many arguments if you want to format stuff, for example. So then this will hold all arguments that were passed to the log level. Then below, again, part of the builder pattern is which environment variable are we tracking? So here we will call it log x log because this is a log example, logging example application and for short log x and then underscore log is uh, the log configuration of our application. Here you see an example. If we run it like this, then the log level of everything will be worn. So the root level that we have seen uh, here. Then we can go into log x, the module foo will log at info and then log x foo bar will log with the level debug. Down here, we can also use a filter level for our root application. Here we use then this level filter info. And here is an important warning. This wins over the environment setting. This warn level for the application level will not win in the end because when you use the filter level setting, this will always be setting up the filter level that you've set in the application. Let me run the initialize. So this will set up the whole logger and these macros will then be able to do the correct job in your application. Let's quickly run the Rust code to see if uh, it behaves as expected. I will hop over to the Rust thing. We go to logx, we go to cargo, run this. So here you can see that in our logx directly, we get the info output, which means that this level filter info one, and that makes a lot of sense because we did not use this environment variable. Let's use the environment to run the application. 
So we copy that. We export the logging. And we should see a different output now because cargo run will now show us a debug message for the foobar module that we didn't see before because we configured this to be a debug level. And what hasn't changed though is the root still goes all the way to info even though our logx log was born. So to get rid of this we have to simply remove our filter level which we can do and we cargo run again now it complains about us not using our level filter at all ever but you can see here logx only gets worn and errors printed and no longer info because the configuration in our environment variable won the fight this time I hope this short introduction into logging was kind of helpful. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be Sockets.